This video will show you how to solve one-step equations. x plus 5 equals 10 is an example of an equation because there's an equal sign right here showing us that this side is equal to that side. That's an equation. This also says that somebody started with some value of x, we don't know what it is, they added 5 to it and the result was 10. What we'd like to do is figure out what that value of x was to begin with. To do this, we're going to work our way backwards. We're going to undo what they did. So our bottom line, our rule for solving the equations is this. You want to get x alone by doing the opposite of what's been done to it. In this case, x plus 5. What's been done to x is it's had 5 added to it. We need to do the opposite, which is subtract 5. We have to maintain the balance. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. So our choice was to subtract 5 because we want those 5s to cancel out. But we must also subtract 5 from the other side also to keep things balanced. All we have to do now is the arithmetic, and we get 5. Now one more thing you need to do after you solve an equation, and that is check it. Equations are very good for checking. So we want to take this 5, which is what we think x is, and plug it in right here and do the arithmetic. So if you put 5 in for that x, you have 5 plus 5. Does it equal 10? Yep, so you know that you're correct, and you move on to the next problem. In this case, we have x minus 3. What's been done to x is it has 3 subtracted from it. So do the opposite, which is add 3 to both sides. These cancel out, which is the whole purpose of doing the opposite. Negative 3 and a positive 3 give us 0, so they've canceled out. The x is going to come right on down. That's what we want is the x alone. All we have to do is deal with this arithmetic. This is a negative plus a positive. Our rule for that is keep the sign of the larger, which in this case is positive, and subtract those. So x will equal a positive 1. Take your 1, plug it back in, and check. Put 1 in for x, and you have 1 minus 3. To check this, you might want to change this to plus a negative if that helps you any. 1 plus a negative 3, those are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger, which in this case is negative, and subtract. 1 from 3 is 2. So we get negative 2, which is what it says we should get. We know that we're correct. This is still the same kind of equation. I just happened to move x to the other side, which is OK. This says x plus 10. We need to do the opposite of adding 10, which is subtracting 10 from both sides. Those 10s cancel out, which is what we want. The x is going to come right on down. All we have to do is this arithmetic. 6 minus 10. Those are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger, which is negative in this case, and subtract. 6 from 10 is 4. So we get negative 4 for x. Plug this back in for your x to check. So our check statement is going to say, does 6 equal negative 4 plus 10? Yes. Negative 4 plus 10, those are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger, which is positive in this case, and subtract. So we know that we're correct. Here's another one where the order is a little different. You look at the 6. There is no sign in front of the 6, which means it's understood to be a positive 6. If you're going to undo this positive 6, you need to do the opposite, which is subtract 6 from both sides. These 6s cancel. The x comes right on down. In this case, the arithmetic is adding two negatives, which says keep the negative sign and add. So we get x equals negative 11. We're going to check that. Put negative 11 in for that x, and you're looking at 6 plus negative 11. That does equal negative 5 because these are different signs. Keep the sign of the larger and subtract. If at any time you do this check and it doesn't work, that says go back and check your arithmetic. Check to see that you actually did the correct operation to both sides, and then check your arithmetic, check your signs. In this problem, this says 3x equals negative 6. We know a number written right in front of the x really means multiply. So x has been multiplied by 3. To undo multiplying by 3, we do the opposite, which is divide by 3. The 3s are going to cancel out for us, and we're just left with the arithmetic, negative 6 divided by 3. A negative divided by a positive is a negative, and of course 6 divided by 3 is 2. The check, we're going to put negative 2 in here for x. 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6, so we know we're correct. x over 5 really means x divided by 5. To undo dividing by 5, do the opposite, which is multiply both sides by 5. These 5's cancel, giving x, which is what we want, 2 times 5 is 10. To check now, plug our 10 in for that x, 
10 divided by 5 gives us 2, and we're good. This kind of problem sometimes gives students difficulty, but it's really not that bad. 2 thirds in front of x means 2 thirds times x. The easiest way to deal with this is to just multiply by the reciprocal. I'll explain later why this works, but right now, when you see a fraction coefficient, you just want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. It's a good idea because the 3 and the 3 cancel out, the 2 and the 2 cancel out, and all you're left with is x, which is what we want. All we have to do over here is the arithmetic. You might want to put a 1 underneath the 12, and then your choice is do you want to just multiply 12 times 3 is 36, divided by 2 is 18, or you could do some reducing. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 12 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18. So how you deal with that arithmetic at the end is your choice. We're still going to check. We're going to put 18 in for x here. So let's do 2 thirds times 18. Good idea to put a 1 underneath here. Same thing as a minute ago. You can do your reducing, which is, I think, the easier way to go. 3 into 3 once, 3 into 18 6. 2 times 6 does equal 12. So we know that we've got it correct. Let's look at another one like that. This time I put the x on the right side, but it's still a matter of that's a fraction times the x. Undo this by multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. Multiply by both sides by 4 thirds. Over here, the 4s are going to cancel out, the 3s are going to cancel out, and you're going to have your x left on this side. Here's a matter of doing your arithmetic whatever way you want. You can reduce the 3 into the 12 or just multiply top, multiply bottom, and then divide it out. I'm going to do the reducing. 3 into 12 is 4. It is still a negative 4, so this is 4 times negative 4, which is negative 16. Plug that negative 16 back in for that x, and let's check. So we're looking at 3 fourths times negative 16. Good idea to give this a denominator. Then let's do 4 into 4 once. 4 into 16 4 times. 3 times negative 4 does equal negative 12, so we're correct. So let's look now why this works. Why do we multiply by the reciprocal on this kind of problem? That's not something we did on any of the other ones. Well, let's look at this a different way. 3 fourths x means 3 fourths times x. On the other problems where we had something times x, what we did to undo the multiplying was dividing. So let's divide both sides by 3 fourths. Now this looks kind of strange, but first off on this side, 3 fourths over 3 fourths just cancels out and we get x, which is what we want. What does this mean, 12 over 3 fourths? That's just another way to write 12 divided by 3 fourths. Now we're talking grade school arithmetic. What do you do with dividing by a fraction? You flip and multiply. So 12 divided by 3 fourths is really just the same as 12 times 4 thirds. Well, what's 4 thirds? It's the reciprocal of 3 fourths. So here's this equation again. How do we say to solve this? Multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Multiply over here by 4 thirds, and there you go. You have 12 times 4 thirds, there's 12 times 4 thirds. So this was the long way around explaining why we multiply by the reciprocal. The easy thing is when you see a fraction coefficient, automatically multiply both sides by the reciprocal, and that's going to be the easiest way to deal with that kind of problem.